Welcome to video two from the Translation and Protein Structure Unit. In this video, we will go over how to translate a sequence of messenger RNA into the proper sequence of amino acids. Remember from previous videos that DNA exists in the cell in the form of chromosomes, and along the chromosomes are regions of DNA called genes. Each gene contains an upstream promoter sequence and a downstream terminator sequence, so that when this gene undergoes transcription, RNA polymerase knows where the RNA should start and stop, making the primary transcript. If this primary transcript is in a eukaryotic cell, it must then go through RNA processing, which included the addition of a five prime cap, and a three prime poly A tail, along with splicing to remove any introns. This has now produced a mature messenger RNA, which is ready for translation. The messenger RNA will be translated to its proper amino acid sequence, forming the primary structure of the protein. That primary structure will then undergo protein folding to form up into its 3D shape or the tertiary structure. This piece of DNA represents a single gene from a chromosome. The green marks the promoter, the purple the terminator, and the underlying region is an intron. To simplify the transcription, the dot 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 represents the DNA sequence found between the end of the promoter and the start of transcription. So you do not need to worry about counting 10 to 25 base pairs to determine where transcription would start. Before I walk you through the process of transcribing and then translating this DNA, can you determine if this chromosome came from a eukaryotic or a prokaryotic cell based on the information you have? Hopefully you realize that introns are only present in eukaryotic DNA, so this gene must be from a eukaryotic cell. In order to transcribe this gene, we must first determine which strand of DNA is the coding strand and which is the template strand. Remember, the coding strand runs in the same orientation as the new RNA, while the template is anti-parallel. The RNA will begin to be made with its 5' end near the promoter, and then will be synthesized as the 3' end grows towards the terminator. This means that the top strand of DNA must be the coding strand because it is the strand that is in the same orientation. To transcribe the primary transcript, I will start 10 to 25 nucleotides downstream from the promoter, which remember in this is represented by the dot dot dot. Thus, this is our start site for transcription. Transcription will occur by copying the coding strand, being sure to replace any thiamines with uracil. Transcription will continue until the end of the terminator sequence. Be sure to note that this is the primary transcript and so it still contains the intron sequence. Because this is a eukaryotic gene, the primary transcript will then be modified by the addition of a 5' prime cap and a 3' prime poly A tail. The third step is the removal of the intron through splicing. Splicing will take our exon here and attach it to the second exon, causing the intron to be deleted. 
This has formed mature messenger RNA, which is now ready for translation. This portion you should have remembered from chapter three. Now we must determine how to translate the messenger RNA's nucleotide language into the correct language of amino acids. Researchers took many years to determine what RNA nucleotides corresponded to which amino acids. They knew it could not be a one-to-one -one exchange where one base in the RNA equaled one particular amino acid in the protein because there are only four RNA bases and 20 amino acids. Additionally, if every two bases equaled one specific amino acid, that would provide 16 combinations, also not enough combinations to account for every amino acid. Instead, the genetic code is read in groups of three nucleotides at a time. Groups of three nucleotides are called a codon, and each codon corresponds to one amino acid. This can be seen in this table called a codon chart. You should notice that each group of three nucleotides is equivalent to only one amino acid, but more than one codon sequence may encode for the same amino acid. Thus, the codon code is unique, but redundant. For example, the nucleotide sequence CCU encodes for the amino acid proline. It will always encode for proline and no other amino acid. Thus, it is unique. However, the nucleotide sequences CCC, CCA, and CCG also encode for proline, showing the redundancy of the genetic code. You should notice that the redundant codons always differ from each other in the third nucleotide, a phenomenon called codon wobble. The genetic code is also nearly universal, which means that this codon chart can be used to read a human gene, a cat gene, and a bacterial gene, all using the same code. You may have seen pictures such as the glowing mice and cats or other animals. This is an example of the nearly universal nature of the genetic code. The green glow is produced by a protein called green fluorescent protein, which is naturally made by jellyfish. The gene for GFP has been removed from the jellyfish and inserted into the chromosomes of other animals. Because the genetic code is universal, the cat cells are able to transcribe and translate the gene into its correct protein even though the gene was from another species. Another good example of the universal nature of the genetic code is the insulin used by both diabetics to control their disease. This insulin is actually produced by E. coli. The DNA sequence of the human gene for insulin can be inserted into E. coli's chromosome and E. coli can produce human insulin because of the universal genetic code. So now we will go back to the RNA sequence we transcribed previously and use the codon chart to properly translate it into the amino acid sequence of its encoded protein. The first step is determining what the correct reading frame is. A reading frame is the grouping of the nucleotides into their codons. The reading frame should be continuous with no gaps or overlaps between codons. For example, we could group the nucleotides like this. Notice that I am bracketing three nucleotides at a time, and there are no gaps or overlaps between the brackets. However, we also could have grouped them in three this way. Or we could have grouped them this way. Each reading frame would give a different amino acid sequence when you use the codon chart. So how do you know which is the correct reading frame to use? The answer is just like transcription had a start and a stop site marked by the promoter and the terminator sequences, translation also has a start and a stop site marked by a start and stop codon. Translation does not occur until the start codon is reached, and it does not continue after the stop codon. The start codon for the majority of genes is AUG. This codon encodes the amino acid methionine and is the only codon you will need to memorize. Looking at the RNA strand, we will start at the five prime end and scan along until we find the sequence AUG. This is the start codon. This will mark our translation start site 
and set the correct reading frame for the gene. Once the correct reading frame is set, we will be able to use the codon chart to determine which amino acid each codon corresponds to. We already know that the first amino acid is methionine. The second codon, CGC, when we look into the codon chart, we find CGC corresponds to the amino acid arginine. Our third codon, UAU, when we find in the codon chart, corresponds to the amino acid tyrosine. The fourth codon, UUC, is phenylalanine. The fifth codon, UAG, you will notice is a stop codon. Although that there is RNA sequence that continues past the stop codon, translation does not continue and it will stop here. The regions of RNA before and after the start and stop codons are not translated. They are called the five prime untranslated region, which we will abbreviate as UTR, and the three prime untranslated region. Depending on the R groups of these amino acids, this chain of amino acids, which is the primary structure of the protein, will now fold up into its corresponding secondary and tertiary structures and go off to perform its function in the cell. You should now attempt translation on your own by answering the following question.